Hey, Shakers, welcome to Handshaking, where Matt Holmes interviews top entrepreneurs on one personal branding tip you can implement instantly. That means today. That means right now, right this very second. And if you need help with launching your personal brand, go to handbrander.com. What's up, Shakers, and welcome back to the Handshaking Podcast, where we interview top entrepreneurs on one personal branding strategy you can implement immediately after listening to this episode. We are still here at Podcast Movement 2016, where we're recording every single episode. In this minute, we're here with Ralph Rivera, the founder of Podcasters Toolbox, everything you need to manage and promote your podcast. Ralph, welcome. So I'm going to go back. Uh, thanks, by the way. I'm going to go back to what we were talking about before, which is the one lesson I always learned when I'm podcasting is never tell somebody what you're going to ask them. Because as soon as you give them an opportunity to say no, then you've lost something that's going to be really, really good for your show. So as I said before, when we were setting up, I never prep a, a guest. I just go right in, turn the microphones on and just let her rip. So thank you for having me, by the way. I love the way that you point like you're, uh, you're totally like into the moment when you're, when you're doing your podcast. It's great. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So um, could you tell us a little bit more about Podcasters Toolbox? Sure. So Podcasters Toolbox is really uh, was birthed out of a need for us as podcasters because my wife and I, we have a podcast called Web Search Social. And we love, we do it for fun, first of all. So we love the creative parts of it, but we don't like the minutia parts of it. So over the past two years, we've developed a bunch of homegrown scripts that allow us to kind of automate certain things and streamline other things so that we don't have to invest so much time in the actual uh, promotional aspects of our podcast. So we like to think of Podcasters Toolbox as a uh, mission control to allow you to plan, produce, and promote your podcast in a, as efficient a way as possible. So I used to be CTO of a company called Triber, which was an influence expansion platform for bloggers, and that was acquired late 2015. And this is now my second uh, post-Triber project that I'm working on. But because I'm working on it with my wife and it's kind of uh, was birthed from our podcast, it's something of a passion project for, for us, something that we feel really, really passionate and hyped up about. Amazing. So walk me through. You know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur who suffers drastically from ADHD. I'm sure you can relate. Ralph, could you tell me where would, if I were to log in, you know, after we launched this, this podcast, what would be one of the first things I'd use? Well, uh, we're launching the, the beta on August 1st, so it's actually not available yet. Um, we're signing up uh, beta users uh, as of August 1st, but it's exclusively for podcast movement attendees. So only podcast movement attendees can log in to the beta and t have, have access to the system. We're going to open it up to an early adopter phase in October, but first we're going to kind of get let the podcast movement attendees kick the tires a little bit. And also we want to go on a listening tour. We're giving them a 60-day free trial, and we want to hear what their pain points are, uh, what their workflow is, what their pipeline looks like, because while the product works really well for us, it might not work well for other podcasters. So we want to make it as good a product as possible, and that's why we're giving them 60 days to go on a listening for us to go on a listening tour with them. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. I would love to learn more about that. And Shakers, that's a there's a great takeaway in there. It's listen to feedback from your customers before you get too specific and, and carried away with your idea. The, most of us set out to launch a business to help others, so make sure you're listening like Ralph is at Podcasters Toolbox. So, Ralph, let's talk a little bit about personal branding. Could you tell me when you first started taking your personal brand seriously? If you listen to our podcast, and I'm sure you haven't heard our podcast yet, but I'm sure you will soon, you'll know that one of the things that we talk about frequently is personal brand. And really, the whole concept of personal brand is partially accurate and partially bullshit. Because personal brand, you'll hear a lot of influencers say things like, be on, go online, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. They'll supplement that with other information like, uh, but here are the things you shouldn't talk about. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about this. So really, what a lot of people are talking about when they're talking about personal brand is, don't be yourself. Be the yourself that I want you to be. That's not a personal brand to me. We, I had a conversation with someone the other day about advertising and how our show, our podcast, the Web Search Social Podcast, will probably never have advertisers because we are ourselves on our show. We are personal brand. We, I don't have a personal brand. I'm just me. When you talk to me at a bar at uh, two o'clock in the morning, you're going to talk to the same guy that you're going to talk to on the microphone when you're on my podcast. I don't dilute myself or, and my wife is the same way. And a lot of people are, are that way. 
So what I would say is don't make your personal brand be a thing. Don't make it a thing that you write down in a notebook or quantify somehow or structure or have a flow chart. Just be yourself because yourself is your personal brand, not the archetype that you want to build because you think you need to reach an audience. Because as soon as you do that, you're never going to reach the audience potential that you could by just being yourself. So that's my answer. I, I agree with quite a bit of that. Authenticity and transparency are some of the most important things when it comes to personal brand. But there's still a lot of other things to consider. Like when you when you take a photo of yourself, you, you have to consider what it's going to look like and what you're trying to promote with it. And I think a lot of those intricate details, it's, it's not a question of authenticity and transparency, but more of making it convenient and easy for the target audience that you're trying to reach. And, and just to kind of add to your point, I think it was Pat Flynn who I heard, quote, it's your vibe that makes your tribe. So I'm, I'm super pumped that you are, you're for that. And could you get a little bit more specific? Walk me through some of the more recent strategies that you've been using to maintain an authentic personal brand or, or just an authentic online presence, I should say, Ralph. Well, you know, for me, it's probably easier because my wife is my business partner. Uh, my wife is obviously my wife. So everything that we do is kind of together. We're, we're, we work together. We live together. We do everything together. So I don't really have to make a distinction between my work life. And you know, a lot of people, when you're talking about your personal brand, it's like, well, here's what I'm going to be during the day when I'm kind of taking pictures on Instagram so that my audience can see it. And then at night, then I go home and I'm the, I'm the husband or the father or you know, the homeowner or whatever. Like for me, those distinctions don't exist because my life is really consumed with doing passion projects right now. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that the projects that I'm working on are things that I want to be working on and that I love. So I don't have this line in my life where I'm like, okay, well now I need to turn on the personal branding aspect and turn off the other things because I'm just, I'm just kind of being me. So I think that from a personal branding, if, we, if we're going to talk about personal branding, what I would say is try to make that line be not so distinctive in your life. If you're a dad, let that be part of your brand. If you're a husband, let that be a part of your brand. If you like playing rugby, let that be a part of your brand. Don't try to make so many distinctions that um, at the end of the day, when someone meets you in person, you come across as fake because the person that they're meeting and the person that they see on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest is so distinct from the person in front of them. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's let's get on to the action item on exactly what our shakers can incorporate to help them live a online life of more transparency. Something really specific, Ralph. What can our shakers do immediately after listening to this episode? Uh, disable any notifications related to email. And I know that that seems like a weird thing to say, but my life was completely and forever changed when I decided to not constantly be dwelling on email. Don't make yourself so available to your customers and your listeners and your audience because the more things you have pulling you in different directions, the harder it is for you to be an entrepreneur, to focus, and to be outside of the whirlwind that can consume you. I don't have any notification. I check my email when I need to check my email. I have times that I dedicate to checking my emails when I need to do that. I don't get dinged. I, my phone doesn't blink and bing and ding and do all kinds of things. I'm very selective. I control my email. The email does not control me. Wow, that's, that's heavy. When you first said that, I looked at you and, and thought to myself, no way. Uh, that, that's, that's a good tip for some people, but I, I don't think I'm going to take that. But after hearing you kind of talk about why, you know, it's, it, makes, it makes sense. You know, it is easy to get pulled a lot of different directions. And, and that's something, I don't know, that's scary. I don't know if I can take that step today, but I know that's a step at some point in the future. You know, as technology continues to evolve, as your personal network continues to evolve and the way we communicate with our peers today and our peers in the future, that's, that's something I'll definitely be considering. So, Shakers, um, consider turning off your email notifications. <laughs> yeah, Ralph, Ralph says you'll be grateful, and um, if you can take the jump, I envy you, because I'm not quite there yet. Um, anyway, before we wrap up, Ralph, could you tell us where we can find you online? Uh, yeah, I have 17 different locations online that you can find me. I'm saying that for your benefit. Uh, podcasterstoolbox.com. Uh, you can find out about me, my business, my links, social media, all that stuff will be there, and uh, sign up. Awesome. Check it out. And Shakers, thank you so much. There's like hundreds of thousands of podcasts, yo. And you're like listening to Ralph and Matt. And we really appreciate your valuable, valuable time. Keep up the hustle, entrepreneurs. Peace. Whoa, Shakers. There it is. Take action today and keep up with the hustle. Don't forget to check out handbrainer.com. And on behalf of Matt and the entire Handshaking team, thank you for listening. I love you.